I don't think that any discussion of Frank and any discussion of stable recovery is complete without mentioning Kim. Absolutely. Because Kim is, she's a saint. And I think Frank would acknowledge that she's a saint uh, for putting up with with him. I mean, his personality is, is so big. And Frank has, I mean, his mind is either going 300 miles an hour or zero miles an hour. And he comes up with all these ideas. And she has to kind of be the governor and be the one that holds it all together. And, you know, it's pretty cool to watch the, the relationship that she's unflappable and he's totally flappable and going a, a thousand miles an hour, which is a, you know, it's a great thing because, you know, any good relationship, there's balance and they complement each other. And so I think that, you know, it would be inappropriate or not, not realistic to say that, you know, how important Kim is to Frank and to stable recovery and to the, to the entire process because she's, she's a big part of, of him and his success and the success means the things that he's accomplished, you know, throughout his life. So that's my one, not even a plug for Kim, but it's the truth. Uh, when I first met Frank, I was super intimidated by Frank, right? Here's this, you know, super rich guy, you know, part owner, part owner of one of the, the biggest thoroughbred uh, casino in the world. And he wanted to help a drug addict, an alcoholic like me, I could not like, like wrap my mind around that. Um, fast forward to a little over two years of knowing Frank, he genuinely has the purest heart I think I've ever met in a human being. Um, no ill motives. Like you said, Robert, he, he doesn't do it for the attention. He doesn't do it for the what they call clout. He just generally wants to help people out and gives people like myself, a leg up in life. So when Frank really started being a big part of my life is when I lost both of my parents uh, mid-2000s. And uh, Frank kind of became my father figure that, that I really needed at that time. Um, I can say today, you know, God first and foremost, but Frank is a big reason I'm uh, sober today, and I don't think I could ever repay him for, for what he's done for me in my life and countless of other people. Um, I could give you a laundry list of, of people that Frank Taylor has, has helped over the years. But With stable recovery, he's hit a, a grand slam out of the park. Uh, you know, the amount of lives that is changing and just, um, you know, it's saving people. It's literally saving lives on uh, an epidemic that is just ravaging the country. I mean, people talk about COVID, you talk about uh, terrible things going on in the world, but the addiction uh, epidemic is worse than any of them. And, and in my opinion, it doesn't get the resources thrown at it that it needs to. So Frank in his corner of the world is trying to make a real difference. And I've got a ton of admiration uh, and love for him. He's, you know, he's a lot like my mom and dad. You know, they were very giving people, and he's a lot better than me in a lot of ways. Because, you know, I can be judgmental. Uh, I want to do good things for people, but I'm always cynical. Or, or you know, are they worth the effort? And Frank doesn't even ever calculate uh, any of that. He just, uh, whoever they are, wherever they are, uh, he's going to do his best to help them, and he doesn't expect anything in return, which is just, it's beautiful. So. Uh, God bless you, Frank. Keep it rolling. Uh, you're doing great things. Frank Taylor came into my life around 15 years ago. Um, on It was the night my dad died. And um, he, uh, it was like 3 in the morning. And Frank scooped me up. And he took me to the Adoration Chapel at Christ the King. Um, he put a coat on my back and he prayed with me and uh, that uh, ever since that night he's he's uh, stuck by my side he's been a mentor to me a father figure and my best friend and that's that's just who Frank is uh, he invested time in me uh, this whole time and knowing I can't give him anything back Frank and I, you know, to this day, we still go to adoration every uh, 
Tuesday night, seven o'clock, and uh, it saved my life. It has saved my life, and I'm the man I am today because of Frank Taylor. Uh, thank you, Frank. I love you. Hey, hello, Frank. Uh, I like my car. It's kind of nice, huh? Hey, listen, I'm really sorry I'm not able to be with you all tonight, but uh, I just want to let you know how proud of you I am, and, and I know God's proud of you. You're, you're certainly being in the hands and the feet of Jesus and reaching out to the less fortunate and giving them another chance. And I can't thank you enough for allowing Sheila and I to be a part of Ready Made Stable. Uh, and, and part of all of that and just uh, the stable recovery and their ongoing work there. And I, I applaud you, man. Keep up the great work. This uh, thing that he started, Stable Recovery, is really changing lives. And um, you know, all of us are broken in some way, and we need people like Frank to reach out and uh, help us up and to give us a, a chance and an opportunity. Not too many people are born great and stay that way their whole life, so we all need help, and we all need people like Frank to uh, to serve us and to, to help us and to be thinking about us, and I think that, uh, you know, he's a good model for that. He's followed my father's footsteps, and I, uh, I really appreciate all he's done for me. Well, so Frank, I think part of the makeup of Frank that makes him special and a lot of people do remember him is that he is willing to do for others what a lot of people won't. And he doesn't look uh, for a TDN article on it, you know, necessarily. He's not looking for a lot of notoriety. Um, he likes to make connections with people, try to meet them where they are, and help them move their life forward, however that may be. And he's, you know, he's someone who gets in the trenches and um, you can count on him, he's going to be there, and he's going to try to follow through and make sure that, that people get to where they want to go. Sure, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that we typically judge people by uh, initially is their, you know, their success. How many million dollar horses have you sold? How many derby winners have you bred? How many, um, you know, accomplish that. I mean, like, you know, what was your gross sales last year? What's your goal for this year? And I think those are all normal type things that people evaluate success by. But but at the end of the day, I think that the, the measure of a man or a woman is, you know, you know, what have you done? How have you helped people? Um, and, you know, I think that when you consider that Frank's level of service and the number of people's lives that he's touched is frankly remarkable. Uh, it's 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 inspiring. It gives us all something to achieve for. Um, um, yeah, Dad's always been a person that is looking out for others. Um, he he's always giving of himself and trying to think of ways to help people. Uh, he very much loves to jump in and save everyone. Um, I, I, before it was stable recovery, I used to call it Frank's Lost Boys. Um, <laughs> he always has a group around him. Um, but that goes for everybody. It doesn't matter if it, who it is or what the situation or, or anything. If he can help, he will help. And um, it's definitely something to be admired. Need you uh, uh, come down, uh, uh, come down to church and uh, help me do my hour of adoration today. Uh. Uh, 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 boy, 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 this Frank, Frank, yeah, 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 how you doing? Hey, what well, well, that Frank? How you doing? Uh, listen, I need, I need, I need, I need, Kaylee. What do we need? I need, I, I need, I need, I need ten more stalls at Saratoga, and I want, I want, I want, I want new fans up there. I need some new fans up there, and and and, and, and can you water that grass just a little bit more? And well, well you know that man, man is really good, but uh, well, you know, I, no, don't worry, don't worry about the grass. Can I, can, can we get some? Can we get some? Can we get some food vouchers? Can we get? I mean, sure we go do something. I mean, I, we're, we're, we're bring, it's really expensive for us to come up here. Like we really, I need. I, I, Katie, what else do we need? <laughs> uh, uh, Frank, this is Will. Got shit. Huh? Will, this is Frank. Please give me a call whenever you get this. Uh, Mama Kim, uh, 
can you put some money on my TDG account? Uh, 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 Dan, uh, I see you over there uh, at Gaddafi. Uh, you know, we're going to need some help every once in a while. Uh, uh, we might need some seasons. You might help us out with some seasons. Uh, uh, you know, we'll be good for it. Uh, <laughs> Mike, go get that feed bucket. I'm going to show you how to get these horses up here. Uh, 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 Katie, what you doing? Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, Steve, uh, what, uh, what are you working on? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, that sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later, bye. Hey, yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Mama Kim, uh, uh, can you get me some Kool-Aid? <laughs> uh, okay, bye. Uh, 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 just get him on the phone, get him on the phone. <laughs> can y'all stop the meeting for a second? I just gotta get, make sure I capture that note. At Siri, text Frank Taylor and tell him to follow up with Mona to make sure that uh, we're getting that new uh, garage at the Preston Farm uh, with uh, all the pictures up before uh, we have our lunch over there next week. Uh, thank you. Okay, let's start the meeting again. Uh, where, where were we?